Hey kids, here we are looking at uh, issue number three of Ya yeah, or Ya yeah, magazine. I am continually impressed with the ability for small organizations to punch out really good quality stuff. I just finished recording a video regarding Revolution Games. Uh, the uh, Siege of Orgun, or Orgun, uh, depending on how you want to pronounce it. And uh, great production values, fun game. Very, very interesting that those, and that title uh, comes in a Ziploc and it's you know, somewhere between $25 and $35. Lots of replay value. It's a, kind of a storm over style game, but doesn't use cards to generate actions. So, uh, cards are used to enhance the gameplay. So you have that, the, you know, small publishers like Revolution, and then you have Yar Magazine, which has come out of nowhere. It's a quarterly, quarterly magazine. Check this out, okay? Nice artwork on the cover. Like, okay, that's fine. Kevin, everyone has nice artwork on the cover. Great editorial, very funny uh, and, and entertaining. Um, lots of really good content in this particular uh, edition. Let's let's zoom in here and check this bad boy out, okay? What do we got here? So Roger LaRoe writes about the coin series. Peter Perler looks at uh, uh, two games from uh, covering the Waterloo, Battle of Waterloo. Uh, Ania does a wonderful job to in the review of the uh, nuts publishing game to the last man uh, battle of the atlantic is covered by uh, robert smith and cruel necessity is covered off by tom who's also the editor and brad smith my buddy who runs the uh, most excellent blog called hexides and hand grenades does uh, a sterling job of covering the korean war which is a just another exemplary victory games title and he goes into extensive detail as to why he thinks this is one of the perfect games and systems. And it's a fantastic article. Brad has a, uh, a degree or a PhD in literature and can write like a madman, lives in Japan. Does just an amazing job. He's a real wordsmith. I, I aspire to be able to write 10% uh, as well as Brad does. Fantastic. Matt Foster, <laughs> he has a very engaging article written here about Imperial Assault. This, uh, okay, and so I guess, uh, then of course I missed this one at the top here, right? Uh, interview with uh, Volker Runke and uh, Brian Train. Does it get any better than that, right? So, huge magazine. Those types, those folks that just buy magazines for scenarios and the games, you're not without uh, value here either. Check this out, okay? So you've got uh, X-Wing Imperial Assault to I think it's a mini campaign for this guy. This is a scenario for Rivet Wars. You've got a Valor and Victory uh, scenario, Heroes of Normandy scenario, uh, Combat Commander Europe scenario. For all you crazy guys who are just chomping at the bit to have uh, every single uh, Combat Commander scenario, you're going to have to buy the magazine because it looks like a pretty interesting scenario. I've uh, read through it. There's a kind of a campaign for one of the a title battle, tiny battle publishing uh, titles called called uh, Neuschwabenland. Uh, I've got a copy of that game. Read the rules. Really keen to play it. I might start by playing these this these scenarios, the switcheroo scenarios. Okay, and then there's a game. Yeah, I mean, just in case you're wondering, it comes with a freaking game, um, which is kind of crazy. For is it twenty nine ninety nine? I think this is twenty nine ninety nine. So let's have a check. Let's check out the map. As you can see, it's uh, it's a compact map. This is called Into the Pocket Operation Winter Storm. Let me back it up a little bit. Oh, we zoomed in. There you go. So you can see it's uh, bigger than eleven by seventeen, but not by much. Twelve turn scenario. Very evocative uh, color scheme. I'm assuming all the cities are in the right place. Does everybody know? Does anybody know? Really like the artwork on the map. First, I've actually seen this. Yeah, and uh, Ania did the artwork as well. And Ania, I'm not going to try and pronounce your last name, okay? So, God bless you, 
woman, you do an awesome job. Uh, counters. I don't know if there's too much glare on those to see them or not, but you've got your, I'm going to guess these are going to be guard units. Well, maybe not. Ah, what does R stand for? I need to read the rules, don't I? So, Soviet units. German units at the bottom. Clean, straightforward. Big package, tiny fun, a little bit of advertising. You need to go check this website out too. I've bought uh, all of these titles. Uh, very, very cool. I've played this guy, played this guy, read the rules of this dude. I've got this at the office. Uh, trying to get around to playing that at some point and uh, just finished the rules for sticks and stones and had it set up in my hotel room the other day did not get a chance to play had to pack it up we will get to that shortly as well uh, and the counters are actually not too shabby I will say that much uh, they they are all cut well they're centered it's a refreshing change to see them done right okay why do you think I like this? Well, I'll, I'll let you look at some of this magazine and you tell me why I think I like this. There's a ludography of uh, all Volky's games, Volko's games, Brian Train's games. I'm surprised I could fit it all on one page. Guy's a machine. I want a camera that can take pictures like that. Look at that bad boy. Now, innovating on Waterloo. This is a really interesting article, actually. Uh, Peter Perler did a fantastic job of contrasting these two games and looking at them for why, why they are interesting and why they're different and, why, and explaining why he's excited about the two titles. Uh, excellent job. And I will leave you to uh, read the article to, to understand what he thinks about the two games and why he thinks they're innovative. Because that's the name of the title, right? Innovative, Innovating Waterloo. And I think these two games do take a very fresh approach to the Battle of Waterloo. Uh, Ania does a great job. Now, English is her second language. And I'm going to tell you, I know this has probably been edited, but her prose is uh, very good. It's pretty detailed review and work through of the game and why she liked it. <clears throat> to the last man, it's a perfect tool for familiar to familiarize newbies to that powerful way of killing enemy units by hmm, starvation. Love it. Great quote. Look at that picture. This. And now I've got, and then here's, uh, here's Brad Smith's article. Uh, and as I was saying, just a uh, really uh, comprehensive look at this game. I had to pause the video for a second there, guys. So if this is uh, disjointed, that's kind of the reason why. Now, Bel Belkowski uh, is a very interesting chap, and I, every game of his I've bought, I've just been intrigued by. I have this Korean game and it's on my list to play. Um, oh damn, we need more time. I need to get rich and retire. All right, uh, the Star Wars articles I was telling you about. Beautiful artwork, photographs. Look at that stuff, that's just badass. And then the scenarios are back here somewhere as well. This is a really long, uh, I think there's a, Scenario starting here somewhere. Yeah, there's a mini campaign. How cool is that? Look at this. I think you guys are get a kick out of that. So, uh, where's this? Uh, is the um, here is the Normandy game. This is the uh, Wurzburg at Bruin, Bruinval, uh scenario. I think you'll find it pretty interesting. And then of course you've got this switcheroo part one, two, three, and four. 
and then the rules and the uh, commentary for this, uh, this the insert game into the pocket. And you can see there's one, two, three, four, six, seven pages of rules, combat tables, you're done. There you go. I know that was a, uh, a long, what's in the back here? Oh, it's a, uh, that's a uh, Indian Abyss. No, that's a uh, Fire in the Lake. What am I thinking? Look at that. All right, there you go, guys. I wanted to want to share that with you. Have a look at this uh, video. I had to uh, beg Mark for a copy of this guy. Uh, they were almost uh, out of print on this bad boy. So do so a favor and buy it. Uh, I've now this is my third copy of this. I, I received the first two for free, and uh, they need to set up a subscription model so that we can just sign up and buy. And I also think the Tiny Battles needs to set up a uh, sub subscription model so that we can just receive those games every month. Just send them to me. <laughs> just let me write the check and, and put it on my credit card so I don't think about it. All right, later.